What's up guys, it's the Try Guy here. I'm finally back for another video. I know I've been gone for a long time, so I wanna make a little update on my bike garage, on my three main bikes that I've been using a lot this summer, and just let you know what's going on, which are the bikes, and what kind of components they have, and how I use them. I'm pretty sure you guys are pretty aware of most of these bikes, but I'm guessing there's one of these that you didn't know that I had, and I actually just got it recently, so it wouldn't be too surprising. But first off, I wanna start off with my Trek Imonda. This is kind of the first one that I really ever showed you guys, and uh, one of my favorite bikes that I've ever owned and uh, give you guys a little rundown of it. So basically I bought it about three months ago or so, right after I sold my S3. I didn't have a bike for a couple weeks and then finally it came in. And um, basically it's a Trek Amanda SL6, which means that it comes with Ultegra and it comes with these Vision Metron wheels, which are a 40 millimeter deep dish rim. Um, so a little bit more aero and a lot lighter than the regular just Amanda SL wheels and um, has this nice paint job too that only comes on the SL6, which I love. Probably my favorite looking bike out of all of these three. Just looks awesome rolling down the road. So um, the only thing that I've really changed on this bike is a pretty big thing, is um, upgrading it to Drace instead of Ultegra. So as I kind of mentioned in one of my previous videos, um, I traded my Ultegra with my coach for this used Drace, still Drace 9000, so basically the same level as the Ultegra. Had a few scratches here and there, but that didn't really bother me too much because it's so much lighter than the Ultegra. I wasn't really looking to upgrade the drivetrain at all. I was super happy with Ultegra. I was loving the way it felt but uh, my coach wanted to trade. He offered up the trade to me to basically trade my essentially brand new Ultegra, barely used. I think I rode it two times before I switched to Jure's. So um, he wanted it because it had the compact gearing in the front and he wanted to put it on a cross bike that he was building up. And this was the only kind of set he had lying around, which is a 53 in the front, where mine was a 50. So a little bit smaller and a lot better for cross. So um, basically just, I agreed to do the trade. This is about 0.65 pounds lighter. So it did make the bike quite a bit lighter, especially the cranks are a lot lighter in Jure's than Ultegra. And um, otherwise the bike is crazy light, basically just edging on 16 pounds. I think it should be a little bit below with the um, Dre Ace. I haven't actually weighed it, but I know it's crazy light. And um, I don't really care that much about the weight because it just feels amazing, super light and stiff. So I'm really enjoying this bike. This is essentially exactly how I run it. It is a little bit dirty right now because I do use it basically every day for training. Two bottle cages on there. Um, got my saddlebag in case I get a flat, that type of stuff. So this is my everyday using it up bike and I'm really loving it. So next up is my Trek Pro Caliber 8. I think I've only posted this one time on a picture on Instagram. So I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of you guys didn't know that I had this bike. Um, so basically it's a pretty sweet mountain bike, pretty much one of their cheapest, really good mountain bikes with good air suspension fork, um, nice wheels, carbon fiber cranks, that type of stuff, but it is an aluminum frame. So um, it's not the crazy high end, but it's still a pretty expensive bike. Um, and I'm really having a lot of fun on it. I have been looking to get back into mountain biking for a long time. And now that I'm working at a bike shop where I can get really good deals on bikes, I decided to pull the trigger and just start learning and start riding. Um, it's been a really fun process getting back into mountain biking because I kind of lost the skills I used to have when I used to do it when I was a lot younger. I did try an Xterra, which really, um, made me want to buy this bike. So I tried it by lending a bike from my coach and I really enjoyed it. So I decided to go ahead and get my own bike. Um, it is a 29er, so it's a lot of fun. Takes all the bumps really well. Um, I am kind of taller, so it does fit me really well. Um, for a lot of shorter people, they like to go over 27.5, but um, I'm really enjoying the bike just the way it is. So a little bit more for um, what components the bike has. Um, this one is running Dior XT for the rear derailleur, SLX for the front. So it doesn't have anything amazing like XTR shifters or anything like that, but just gets me by. The brakes are awesome. It has a race face, carbon fiber cranks, and a Bontrager carbon fiber seat post. So it is pretty light for an aluminum frame. Um, I basically decided to go for the higher end components. So instead of um, kind of Olivia or cheaper Dior, um, this bike still has um, Dior XT on the rear, so it's still a really good shifting bike and it feels awesome. And just the frame is aluminum instead of carbon fiber. It's still crazy light aluminum and stiff. And it has Trek ISO speed. Um, I'm not sure how familiar you guys are with that, but it's basically some form of a um, little bit of shock resistance or um, shock dampening. So basically when you're riding on gravel or kind of rougher trails, this kind of evens it out. And it's something that you can really feel 
and I really like having this on the bike. I could have gone with the Trek Superfly, which is a little bit of a cheaper um, mountain bike, which is still really good, but it doesn't have the ISO speed, and um, this bike was just a little bit more expensive for me, so I decided to go with that. Um, the other thing to mention, if you guys are into mountain bikes at all, it has a RockShox Reba fork, so it's pretty good fork, and I like that it's a RockShox and not a Fox, even though Fox kind of has the name for being a little bit more high quality. This is about the same level as a regular Fox fork that would be on the Superfly, for example. But I know RockShox has a lot less problems with uh, maintenance and that type of stuff, and it's a lot easier to service as well, just from what I've seen as working in the bike shop. Um, so next, we're gonna move on to the Cervelo of my race bike. So next up, we've got my Cervelo P3. This is the bike I've been racing on all year, doing mostly Olympic distance tries, which is really awesome, and it's working out really well, especially with this bike. So there's a few things that I have changed since I bought it. Um, I never raced with these wheels. I've actually never actually ridden with these they are the ones that came with the bike but um, I've been just swapping the wheels over from my Amanda onto my Cervelo for basically every single race every time I use it I just swap the wheels back over because I now have the brakes set up for them with uh, carbon fiber pads so it'd be a pain in the ass to have to change the pads every time I run it and I have to also change the uh, cable tension on the brakes because those are wider rims than these ones so I've just been running those wheels that's why this looks kind of dinky right now with just the stock wheels eventually when I save up a little bit more money I will be getting um, some sort of deeper dish wheels or if I just end up selling this bike and buying something else then I'll buy some new wheels for that eventually but right now I'm just rocking the visions they're working out great for me a little bit more arrow a little bit lighter than these ones and um, working out really well and I don't really mind that it doesn't look amazing and it's not as arrow as it could be now a few other things that I've ended up changing on the bike is the saddle it did come with an Atomo saddle but this is one that I had bought Previously, I did make a video about why I really like these saddles instead of the other regular kind and um, maybe I'll link that up here. So I bought this saddle a while ago for my other bike and I kept it when I sold it obviously because I think this is a really nice saddle and it's really comfortable. Um, it did come with an Automo saddle which um, is not quite as high end. I can't remember the, the exact model names but this one is a little bit nicer. ISR Atomo. And uh, the part I really like is that it has a rear transition hook. So basically you don't have to hook it on the transition rack by the front here. It just hooks right on the back. So it makes it really easy to put it on and off. Um, the other thing that I did do is change the bar tape. So initially I just made it black. And then I'm um, actually at the shop. There was somebody who um, had really small handlebars on their bike and they decided to use this bar tape. And there was a bunch left over that we basically would just throw out. And um, I decided just to grab it, see if there would be enough to do my bars. And there's just enough to uh, tape up my handlebars on my P3 to do it. So I just threw this on. I think it looks a lot better. Just kind of cool bar tape, the zigzag Bontrager stuff and um, I'm really liking it. Otherwise, I also just moved the bottle cage to right up here. So it's kind of a um, EIS mount right here that goes right between uh, the aero bars. Um, it works pretty well. The only thing that kind of sucks is that I do have to have the bottle cage backwards, so I have to put the bottle in like this. Um, just because of how these bars go right up, it makes it really hard to pull them in and out, but it really doesn't bother me that much. I just put it in right like there. Maybe it doesn't look the way it should or whatever, but I don't care, I think it's fine. Um, and this is basically the most aero spot you can put a water bottle cage because the frame is just designed to allow airflow like that. If you have a bottle right here or up here, it kind of interferes with that. But right in between your arms basically is the perfect spot because you already have your arms blocking the wind there. So it's right in kind of this hole right there where um, it makes it a little bit more aero. So this one, of course, is running Shimano Altegra, exactly how it came out of the store, out of the box. And uh, with SMA, SFF, FSA uh, cranks, which are pretty good. I think probably the Durace ones would be a little bit lighter. But um, I really like it on the track and I like keeping uh, the Durace together and the Altegra together. So I'm just leaving it like that. Um, eventually I am planning on getting a power meter for my Trek since I just ordered a Garmin. But um, that's going to be coming up during the winter, probably a little bit in the fall. But I'll show you guys all that once that starts going on. So that is about it for this video. I know this one is probably going to be kind of long and kind of weird because I haven't been here for a long time and I haven't been making videos. But I am planning on making some more stuff really soon. Um, I really do want to get back into making videos but I've just been so busy with work and training um, I've essentially working full-time right now to kind of get prepared for school coming up 
um, it's gonna be pretty expensive so I do have to make some money even though I am spending quite a bit of money on bikes as well but um, whatever so basically I do plan on making more videos not quite as much as last summer hopefully once or twice a week there will be a video so make sure you come back and check or uh, put those notifications on just to watch the videos when they come out um, I don't think I'm gonna be having a super regular schedule so I'm just gonna kind of throw them out there as they come and um, as I have time to make them so that is about it for me thanks so much for watching guys hope you guys are still sticking around even though I've been gone for so long so I'll see you guys in the next video um, I'm gonna be doing a couple races coming up soon so there's gonna be vlogs of those so stay tuned thanks for watching guys I'll see you guys in the next one and never stop trying